It's unclear what type of punishment the students will face. Putman believes it should send a message. I think there should be criminal charges brought up against him. I mean, there were threats on her life, more or less. They were threatening to stab her. That's, that's unacceptable. A teacher at Zephyr Hills High School is accused of using the collars as a form of punishment. Lori Bailey Cutcomp nicknamed the collar... He wears the cone of shame! The cone of shame, mimicking the Disney movie Up. Some students thought it was funny. She just did it as a joke and said that she was going to punish us by doing it. But she asked us before and we were all laughing, joking around. Documents show the students were curious about the collar after seeing the movie. So the teacher brought it in and eventually used it to curb bad behavior for eight kids. Parents were furious when the pictures got on Facebook. All the parents were commenting on it, saying that it's not right, that she should get fired and everything, and then she got fired. Of the Space Shuttle Challenger crew, which was the space shuttle mission that exploded in 1986 with the teacher on board. And these were built in memory of that to continue the teacher's mission, Krista McAuliffe, continue her mission of teaching kids about space. And to do that, we have these Challenger Centers. There's about 50 across the United States and a few abroad. I believe there's a few in England, there's one in South Korea, and they're more and more growing every year. Year. And what we do is we actually run simulated space missions. So we'll go to the moon, to Mars, and we'll rendezvous with the comet. And all the kids get to go on it, and adults too, who want to be kids. And <laughs> get to be astronauts for a day. Southern Minnesota are investigating the death of a 13-year-old girl. Rachel Emke, a 7th grader at Cass and Manterville Middle School, committed suicide more than a week ago. Her parents say she was the victim of bullying. Here's Carol Evans' Boyd Hooper. Teen suicide is often a taboo topic, but it's out in the open in shades of purple all over the adjoining communities of Casson and Manterville. And here you got a, a video about a boy who is going to take care of the people who's bullying him on his own accord. School officials ain't going to do shit about bullying, so kid brought a BB gun to the elementary school. On Friday, 1,500 people attended the funeral of Rachel Emke, a Cass and Manterville seventh grader who took her own life after being bullied. We love you. We miss you. Rachel's parents became aware of the bullying last fall when their daughter's gym locker and textbooks were defaced with chewing gum and vicious words. Her father says Rachel and a friend were cornered in the locker room by a clique of girls and threatened. She tried to deal with it. Uh, we thought she was dealing with it and the school thought she was dealing with it. Rick Emke believes his daughter made an easy target for bullying because her loving nature made it difficult for her to fight back. On page 59, Paulo Friere's Pedagogy of the Oppressed, it says, the pleasure in complete domination over another person or an other animate creature is the very essence of the sadistic drive. Another way of formulating the same thought is to say that the aim of sadism is to transform a man into a thing, uh, something animate into something inanimate, since by complete and absolute control, the living loses the one essential quality for life, freedom. Sadistic love is a perverted love. It's a love of death. It's not a love of life. It's a love of death. One of the characteristics of the oppressor consciousness and its necrophilic view of the world is thus sadism. They're sadistic, psychopathic, fascist, oppressive pieces of shit. Fuck oppressors. Lennon Baldwin, 15 year old, allegedly bullied at school, committed suicide. The day before Rachel's death, the school notified her parents of another incident. I saw the message come out. Chris Flannery says his daughter was among several middle school students who received an anonymous text. It was pretty explicit. Uh, something to the effect of that Rachel was a slut and that uh, to get her to leave the Casa Manorville schools, forward this to everyone you know. Two days later, Rachel hanged herself. In high definition. Good afternoon, I'm Rob Morrison. And I'm Mary Calvi. A heartbreaking goodbye to a New Jersey teen who may have taken his own life because he was bullied. Friends and family of 15-year-old Lennon Baldwin gathering for today's funeral in Morristown. CBS 2's Rachel Stockman is there.
We are conducting an investigation. Dodge County Sheriff Jim Jensen says Minnesota lacks a bullying statute that applies to Rachel, but adds prosecutors have other options, including harassment, if charges are filed. Threats, terroristic threats might fall in there depending on what type of bullying is going on. Rachel's father says he doesn't blame the school, but wishes there had been greater consequences for the bullies last fall. He says he was stunned to learn six weeks after Rachel's locker was defaced that those terrible words had still not been cleaned up. Words hurt. Words can kill. Yep, and it, and it did. <laughs> and then if your friends or family isn't even there for you, I look up to one of the most supporting people of the gay community that I think of, that I know, uh, Lady Gaga. She makes me so happy, and she lets me know that I was born this way. And that's my advice to you from her. You were born this way, and all you have to do is hold your head up far. Hold your head up, and you'll go far. And I'd give anything to have her back. I really would. We left multiple messages today for the superintendent of schools at Cass and Manterville. None of them were, were returned. Rachel's dad says he talked with his daughter Friday, uh, that would be a week ago Friday, about the bully, bullying, and she pleaded with him not to make a big deal of it for fear it would make things worse. She put on a happy face on Saturday as the family planned for an evening of board games and movies, then slipped away for a few minutes under the guise of needing to do some homework before she killed herself. Rachel's friends are planning a walk for Rachel in Austin on May 19th to raise awareness of bullying and to support her family. Well, there are just no words. I mean, our hearts go out to that family. It is a tricky situation for investigators. Because that's all you have to do. Just love yourself and you're set. And I promise you it will get better. I have so much support from people I don't even know online. I know that sounds creepy, but they're so nice and caring and they don't ever want me to die. What are you doing about this? Karen, why did you get a hippie? Keep walking. Hippie. Bye. Get up there! Get up there! Get up there! Father! 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 Classmates gather around Lennon Baldwin's casket this morning as it was brought into Morristown United Methodist Church. The parents of the 15-year-old freshman never imagined this day would come. Students were shocked by the loss. The community's in pain. Whenever you lose someone as precious as a 15-year-old boy, um, particularly to suicide, the community has to take some reflection and figure out, you know, where is the hope lost? Um, why are we not as kind to each other? Police are investigating whether bullying drove Lennon to kill himself. You can't make contact with me. That's illegal. Okay. So as I was saying, <laughs> how do I do number five? You're right. I have to factor the A squared. <laughs> Friends tell CBS 2 News that a group of three students had been taunting and even robbed Lennon right before he took his own life. They robbed him and jumped him and took everything. A friend of Lennon posted this video on YouTube as a tribute. Lennon loved music. He played the guitar and was a championship bowler who already won college scholarships. He was a quiet kid. He was a good bowler. Yo. No hype. Oh, great save. Can't save it. Great move! Whoa! You want to go to jail now? Get out! No! I'm going to go to jail! You're going to go to jail! You don't touch me! You don't want to touch me! Yo, what the hell are you going to do? I want to teach you math! No, I can find you in the table. Something else Paulo Freire, uh, author of Pedagogy of the Oppressed, says. Uh, is that violence is never initiated by the oppressed. Violence is, uh, only true violence comes from the oppressor. Any violence that the oppressed 
has in retaliatory to the violence that's put on them is an act of love. Uh, only from the oppressed do we get any humanity. An oppressor doesn't understand uh, uh, people as, as people, as human beings. They only understand them as objects to be exploited and manipulated. So when the violence comes from the oppressed to the oppressor, uh, it's an act of love because it it does two things. It, uh, it, it develops dignity within the person saying, I love myself. And I'm not going to allow you to hurt me. I'm not going to allow you to, to hit me or to harm me and to put violence on me. So it's a, it's an act of self-love. It's also an act of love for the oppressor to tell that, that motherfucker to stop. To tell him that, you know, you're hitting me. Now you're getting hit back. And since you feel the pain that you're inflicting on me, you should stop. So it checks the oppressor. And that's a love for the oppressor saying you need to stop doing this. If this is a loving, caring relationship then this is not the way that we should interact with each other. And, and it also is a declaration of uh, self-love, saying that I'm a human, I'm a person, I, uh, uh, I don't deserve to be treated you know, uh, in a certain way. I don't deserve violence. I don't deserve um, insults and taunts and to be ordered around like a dog. So when I see the bus monitor getting taunted by the kids, yeah, the kids did say some things, and they probably went too far some people said something about criminal charges there's no threats one of the jokes was close but i mean they was just rolling with the joke so uh it wasn't it wasn't a threat it was just a um uh a borderline joke i think um but i see her as being the oppressor i see the bus monitor as the one saying you need to shut up and sit down and when she gives her order saying you need to do as i say or else, or else, or else what? Or else violence will happen? I mean, that's the implication with those sunglasses. Get there, you know, get there. Get, get there. That's, I mean, that's two word order. That's, that's an oppressor. And oppressive people cannot love other people. Everybody loves them. As prosecutors investigate exactly what drove Len into suicide, Family and friends try to cope with the young boy's death. It's very, very sad. And everyone is just attempting to um, make sense of it. And it just scares me that people are pointing fingers. Uh, right now, the community just has to come together and find, find a way to be kinder to each other and gentler. In Morristown, Rachel Stockman, CBS2 News. That's when he says he was beaten up. He says all the kids around cheered, except for one. That one was videotaping the whole thing, which would end up, of course, on Facebook. That was two days ago. The boy hasn't been back to school since. ABC 2 News' Christian Schaefer comes in right now to tell us that the boy beaten up was and is autistic. He is, yeah. The video is disturbing. What's also disturbing is that the boy and his parents say that the bullying has been going on ever since that boy was in the first grade, and they say the school system never did anything to stop it. First, you hear one of the children in the cell phone video say, No, pick the shit out of him. This is all on YouTube. It actually ended up on Facebook. Either way, what comes next has police and school officials investigating the boy whose face we're hiding punches 11 year old Caleb Kula in the head while everyone else at the bus stop cheers him on. I am. Karen, where'd you get a head? Keep walking. What's up, Perky? Bye. Get up there. Feather. I knew I was probably going to get injured. I knew I wasn't really scared because I knew what would happen. Caleb, a sixth grader at Elkton Middle School, told us he's been the victim of bullying at school for years. I just have a bad reputation. He's been diagnosed with a form of autism along with attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. At least kids then. Aren't, don't have special needs, can defend themselves a little bit more. Um, he's pretty much defenseless. During a typical school day, Caleb says the other kids... Call me homosexual. They try kicking me, pushing me, punching me, and a lot of other things. Look, this is a grown woman. She's 68 years old, and they feel like they can gang up on her like that and, and tear her apart. Now, imagine if they did that to one of their peers. 
Mm -hmm. That's a million times, I mean, I don't know if it's a million times worse, but someone who is an, an adult, someone right. who probably doesn't have thicker skin, who's insecure because they're in middle school or high school or whatever it is. 